guys, Richard Olden here, and welcome to the channel. Have you ever wondered how much power adders actually add to your LS motor? I'm talking about nitrous. I'm talking about a blower. I'm talking about turbos. In this video, I'm going to show you what happens when you run power adders on an LS engine family. We're going to start off with the first of my three tests on one of my favorite motors. It is a junkyard 5.3 liter that we upgraded with cam springs and a carbureted induction system. Then we ran nitrous, not just a little bit of nitrous, but all of the nitrous. Every bit of the nitrous that that plate or solenoids or jetting would actually take. So what happened? Check it out. The next test was a big 671 supercharger from the blower shop run with two carburetors on a stroker 5.3, otherwise known as a 383. Boost, stroker, lots of awesomeness. The final test was actually a turbo run on a 6 liter LS. And by turbo, I mean actually turbos because I ran two of them. S475 versus the S480. Check it out and find out why I don't think the test actually showed what I wanted it to show. To get things started with our power adders for the LS engine family, we're going to take a look first at nitrous. And this was kind of a cool test. This is a junkyard 5.3 liter, but we actually ran it carbureted. And I did this test when I invited uh, Kamikaze Chris from Street Outlaws over. And we did a shootout on who could make the most power out of nitrous because he was running lots of nitrous stuff, you know, back in the day. And I let him pick whatever motor we want. We had two of these 5.3s on the engine dyno and they both made the same power. And I said, look, you can pick either one that you want and you can put whatever jet and whatever nitrous what you want it we'll, we'll kind of do a shootout it's pretty cool and so for you guys that are going to ask he actually won by a couple of horsepower but i think it's because he had brulee helping him but <laughs> i'm just giving a hard time great guy i lost money on the bet so it was an it was an awesome time but more importantly it gave us a lot of good data we were running this junkyard motor it had it was a junkyard 5.3 and lm7 it had a good healthy comp cam and it was the comp 54-454-11 so it was a 613 6 23 lift, 227, 243 degree, degree duration, and 113 degree lobe separation angle. We had a Holly single plane intake manifold on at 650 Holly HP carburetor, inch and seven eighths long tube headers, and the MSD ignition controller to control everything. And we obviously were retarding timing with each one of these steps. Now, our first step with the nitrous, but first let's get to show you how much power this motor made naturally aspirated. Our carbureted 5.3, carbureted Aww. in cam 5.3, 454 horsepower and 396 foot-pounds. And here's what happened after we added our Zex perimeter plate nitrous setup. And it says 100 horsepower jetting, but we actually, this was actually like a 52 jet, um, which is more than 100 horsepower, more like 125. This ended up with our nitrous making 591 horsepower and 521 foot-pounds. You can see we activated this fairly late. We're just trying to get a big number when we were doing the competition. So the later that we hit it, the more nitrous we would still have in our tank. And we just get a big number is kind of what we were looking for. But here's what happened after we went up in successive jumps in nitrous. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of the, the torque number here. That's not really too much of a concern. Here's what happened when we ran our next jet. And this was a, basically we stepped up to a 78 jet with a nitrous. And you can see we picked up quite a bit of power. Peak power was now up to 693 horsepower. And here's what happened when we put our final jetting in there because it just wouldn't make any more power. We put a 100 nitrous jet in it. And obviously we're going up uh, in successive fuel jets as well to make the air fuel curve. And, and actually, when I, and we'll show you this, the air fuel curve was... Um, consistent NA and with the nitrous. So we kept this thing in the, in, like kind of in the 12s with our nitrous because we were getting pretty spicy on our nitrous tune. But this made 738 horsepower. And you can see as we're going up and up, we're starting, even though we're going up fairly big jumps, we're taking fairly big swings at the, the nitrous jetting, we're getting less and less of a gain. There's two reasons for that. One is that the motor eventually would get to a point where based on its NA power output, it just can't process any more nitrous. So we're talking about a 450 horsepower motor running almost 300 horsepower with, worth of nitrous. So it gets to be an awful lot. And also because we're getting to the flow limit of something in our nitrous system, whether it's the solenoids or the plate or the orifice where we're putting the jetting in, something is limiting the total flow of our system. So it could be the motor, it could be something in the nitrous kit itself, but we're getting fewer and fewer gains. So that's our nitrous setup. So now we can take a look at what happened when we started running boost from a blower.
Now that we've taken a look at nitrous on our carbureted 5.3 LS, we're going to take a look at another carbureted supercharged combination. This one actually on a stroker version of the 5.3. We step things up to 383 cubic inches by boring this out, boring this motor out to 3905, adding a 4 inch crank. It had Wiseco pistons, K1 rods, Speedmaster forged crank, so the internals were nice. Trick flow, 225 heads on it, a good healthy crane hydraulic roller, 624 lift. 232, 242 at 50, and 112 degree load separation angle. Thanks to the guys at ATI for supplying a dampener that we can bolt our uh, pulleys to to drive the blower. Inch and 7 eighths headers. We had stock rockers. And we ran a uh, MSD ignition controller on it to control this thing because we ran it with a Victor Jr. at a 950 XP carburetor. We also ran this thing fuel injected. But run with the carburetor on our 383 stroker. This thing produced 526 horsepower and 496 foot-pounds of torque. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we added our supercharger to this combination. The supercharger was actually a 671, which is kind of cool. And we've run lots and lots of tests with pro chargers and vortex and torque storms and centrifugal supercharger stuff, and even stuff with Kenny Bells in fuel injected form. But this was a carbureted version. So we ran the 671. The kit came from the guys at Speedmaster, meaning the intake manifold and pulleys and stuff. The blower itself actually came from the guys at Blower Shop who do an excellent job over there. This blower has been run a ton of times on a bunch of different applications. Uh, on supercharged combinations, both on the LS and small blocks and big blocks and stuff. In fact, this same blower made was getting up near a thousand horsepower on a big block. So we know it has lots of potential. We didn't run a lot of boost on this combination. We ran a pulley combination that basically produced about seven and a half pounds on this thing. And this was run with uh, race gas, not E85. E85, we would have made even more power and we could have changed the pulleys to run the boost up. But at seven and a half pounds, this thing produced 753 horsepower. And by the way, with this blower combination, the dedicated manifold and the 671 from the blower shop, we ran two 950 um, Holly blower carburetors. So we made 753 horsepower. 625 foot-pounds of torque, nice flat kind of torque pl plateau, even more so with this blower combination. 750 horsepower out at 6,600 RPM. Boost was still climbing. Power was still climbing. You know, this is a good combination. The cool thing is that it's an LS, but it has like that old school look with a big roots blower on it, two carburetors sticking out the hood. So that's really <laughs> all that anybody would see in 750 horsepower if you're going to cars and coffee or you just want to go out and spin the tires and do donuts and stuff. This is more than able to do that. So now let's take a look at what happens when we run turbos. So our final test, even though I have a lot of Turbo LS stuff to choose from, I selected this test. It's actually a 6-liter, a kind of mildish 6-liter, but we ran a couple of different turbos on it, which was very cool. So this was a 6-liter LY6, originally the Big Bang motor. We had made a few changes to it, and we can take a look at our test description here. It was a stock block, stock crank, stock rods. We had did put ring gap in it. Again, 6-liter, a 2008 6-liter LY6. It had trick flow 225 heads on it for this test. It didn't need those heads, but you could run 317s or something. It had a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 twin turbo cam. It had a Dorman LS6 intake manifold and hooker inch and 7 eighths headers run in NA trim, 83 pound Hollies and a, 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 a Holly HP management system. So it worked out very well. And run in NA trim, our 5.3 produced 514 horsepower, 465 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we added our single turbo system, first with an S475 and an air to water intercooler. This is run at 11.3 pounds with our S475. Um, and we made 879 horsepower and 803 foot pounds of torque. This thing did very well. We had our Pro Charger air to water intercooler on it. The S475 was a T4 version because it was one of the twins that we run on the Big Bang motor. We had our truck exhaust manifolds and our single Y pipe um, feeding the the a three inch V band going to the 
our um, V band to T4. We had two uh, tur 45 millimeter wastegates on it from the guys at TurboSmart. We had a seven pound spring and I was using a manual wastegate controller, which is part of the problem with this test that I did. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we ended up comparing an S475 to an S480. Neither one of the turbos were the ways that guys normally get them. Usually they're T6s. Both of these were T4s so that they would be unusual. The other thing that happened is, I'll go ahead and show you. This is our S480. Now the S480 did something cool when it was somewhat expected. It made less power down low, so maybe less responsive from the bigger turbo. We might expect that and made more power at the top. The interesting thing is that this was with a manual wastegate controller. So I made no adjustments to the manual wastegate controller, but what happened just changing the turbo with no other changes to the controller or the wastegates or anything, this thing with the S480 made more power on the top. And we can go through, there's a whole video up here if you want to take a look at all the boost pressure and back pressure and the whole discussion on that. But this really isn't about that. This is more a discussion on we had our NA motor made lots of power when we had a turbo. In fact, we were up near a thousand horsepower with the S480, but it was at like 12 and a half or 12.7 pounds. We were up at like near 780 horsepower or 980 horsepower. Yeah, peak torque was 807 foot pounds or so. And both the turbos did very well with lots of power left in them. But what I should have done on this test is I should have run this thing with an electronic wastegate controller, uh, which we weren't using uh, so much back there. Back then when I ran this test, I should have run the TC1 controller and we would have gotten a better test between the S475 and the S480. Because actually you can see in the middle part here where they were both making basically the same boost. Yeah, they made basic, both, both made basically the same power. Where we would start to see a big change between these two turbos is when we really started to turn these up. And we're getting near the flow limit of the S475. And then the S480 could make more power because it's a bigger turbo. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, I think we proved once again power adders are awesome, especially on an LS motor. Now, our first test, nitrous on a junkyard cammed and carbureted 5.3 liter. We gained almost 300 horsepower. And I think I mentioned previously in the video that I did ring gap on this motor. I did not. And it just goes to show you what you can get away with sometimes without gapping the rings. Our next test, big 671 blower, two carburetors, instant boost. So whether you're going to cars and coffee or to the drag strip, you're definitely going to get noticed with something like that. Now, turbos, LS, obviously a match made in heaven. That always works well. I wish I would have had an electronic wastegate controller to actually do a dedicated test to compare the S475 versus the S480. But as I mentioned, you're not going to see a big change in power until you get to the limit of one of the turbos. I'm Richard Oler. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing.